there everyone and welcome back to TNO the Lasses of Europe. Really, TNO, the community expansion for Arch of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Ugra Lover, but right now, heroes of old. The Evdokia tested the dent between her teeth, cringing at the feeling the newly missing tooth had been knocked out uh, when her face met the plane's dashboard. The last few hours she maintained a stoic front, but the frustration simmered under her. In what world would they have won against these maniacs if they didn't give the mouth the much needed anti air at their airbase to protect the planes that, that got turned against them when the criminals took their airports? If they guarded the couple dozen of planes the rats got away with, they would have not failed. Well, it didn't matter in the end. Her fingers found the charred photo of Constantine she'd always kept in her pocket, bayonets, bolts, execution. At least she would see him again. The middle door of the cell slammed, her softened expression hardening again. But at least she would meet her and bravely. The king collapsed, and all his debauched glory drunk entered the room, sitting down across the pilot, sighing, Is Yolani? Observed Yevdokia's face, chuckling, F me, sorry about the face, but the boys did have to take down your plane. Putting his hand in his pocket, he would take out a metal flask, placing it in front of her. Vodka, we ain't got painkillers on hand, so that's the best I can do for now. Just get over with it. Is Yolani blinked? Say that again? Yevdokia turned her smashed face away from the flask disgustedly. I know men like you, no honor, just so end it, just end it with semantics and take me out. Yuzgalani paused before taking the flask and taking a rapid swig himself before chuckling. What do you think, we're just going to, just because we stole your planes we want you dead? A doggy dog world out there. You shot down the bomber dude, so relax. The term of hero ain't foreign to us. Reinforcements for a price. A still world on Jabba Izzyliani, as he made his way to the caravan, taking heavy steps in his mud. As the Taos convoy awaited on the other side of the compound, its fur-covered traders drew envious looks from the freezing sentries for a moment. Jabba thought that a mocking smile flashed across the head merchant's face. He gazed at the mountain trucks, equipped to pass through any kind of blizzard, while he, the most successful bandit in all of Russia, had to arrive on a horse. The merchant had brought out three dozen crates of rifles, bolts, and some combat knives for the chiefs. Jabba took one of the guns, an old AK-47, its barrels battered, but he could get the job done. He turned his head and nodded to the bandits. They grabbed the crates and carried them off, not unlike how a vulture feasts on the scraps left by a fierce predator in turn. Some footpads emerged from a nearby bush with the heavy sacks around their shoulders. They deposited these into the mountain trucks and disappeared back into the woods. The head trader returned with dry small, reached into his overcoat, and produced a letter. Jabba took it, but before he could open the seal, the merchant had already started their engines. The head trader yelled out, Zatas appreciates this deal, and we hope that many more will follow. Send a messenger to us with your reply. There's a lot more from where that came from. The truck rolled out with the compound, and a strong gust of snow blew into Jabba's face. He was laughing like a fool. Ah, they just don't know what's coming for them. Not, not yet. Creating border tension. Our plan of action consists in disguising the bandits as soldiers of Zatals, with the instruction of creating border tension, and short damaging some of the, our border camps and blaming the Republic for the incidents, giving us the castle's bell to betray Dragunov and cut her ties. The next step is to cut all communication with Dragunov. We'll also take advantage of her past deal that grants them access to her territory, and raid all the caravans without letting them know what had happened. Ah, uh, it looks like we are raiding people. We're getting raided. So what's going on here? Uh, oh, raid in progress. Oh, this is very weird. A little bit of lag, but uh. Oh, there's a number. Okay, now it popped up. Thank goodness. Now we won. Yay! Very good. Very good. And what do we have over here? Agriculture methods. Sure. Why not? Warlord development. Treasure. Ah, political power. Very good. Very, very good. And then we'll end the Dragunov's fiefdom, in which we will go to war with Zatal. So now is the awakening. General Pavel, Pavel Shiryaya. I've been sleeping, sleeping for the longest time in slept in weeks. Approximately six whole hours. A dream of sleep, but sleep nonetheless. Unfortunately, a knock at the door could, that cold early morning awoke him abruptly. Sir, there's something out here you're going to want to see. His secretary shot from behind the door with a grumble. Shiryav got up out of his chair and opened the door. There's some strange news from the Ugran border, sir, the sec said the secretary. As he handed the general a yellow folder, from what the courier told me, some of our men just attacked the thieves' forts. With a creased look on his face, Pavel took the folder, walked over to his desk, and sat down. It began reviewing the files. The events took place just that night, with what looked to be the rogues that house soldiers. Pictures showed them wearing... Was that his army's insignia? Was his army disobeying him now? He continued reading. The soldiers had stormed upwards of 20 Ugran forts and emplacements, technically pushing the border between affords about half a kilometer where were, were ordered it would have been a massive victory for the weakening the border on the Yuga side while the republic gained land and forts however something was still off to the general as he kept reading Shirya Sh I began noticing some strange anomalies even with the fact that it wasn't even ordered notwithstanding most of the men were using much older weapons than what Zataos was issuing to its soldiers with many of the guns looking fresh out of Vorkuta furthermore in at least three of the raids some soldiers simply walked over to the fort hung up the Zataos flag walked over to the next fort the behavior of these supposed Zataos soldiers did not simply line up with how they were trained and the rather, rather good appearance of the soldiers would be downright insulting to see if he actually was their general. There, there was only one viable conclusion you could make. They were not his men. They were, quite clearly, uh, Yugurin forces who had faked an international incident to incite war between the two nations. Action had to be taken. He looked over to his secretary, a particularly literate and fast learning lieutenant, and issued the first order of this new war. Lieutenant, call up the majors, call every officer, call the field marshal. We need to mobilize at the Yugurin border immediately. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice. 
and the fight them. And we must now act quick. The Dragunov will probably know that it's uh, wars on the horizon and will mobilize his troops. We are disadvantaged considering they have more mechanized infantry and more professional army. We will apply our knowledge of guerrilla tactics to trap and overrun their army. To the best of our ability, of course. Yeah, purchase toward artillery. We're okay for now. We don't need that for really. We really don't need that. But still, we get literally no political power. Wow, that sucks. That really sucks. We got a good amount of manpower, which at the time of this recording, I've heard that in the future updates for this mod, especially for Yugra, they'll get less free manpower, so eh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So we got plenty of support equipment too. Oh, nice. Engineers. You know what? You could probably do that, why not? Got plenty of guns, got enough support equipment. Make you guys entrench themselves just a wee bit more to do quite a, a little bit better. Of course, these militias are going to need a little bit more help, but radio silence. A loud knock on the door will Yevgeny Dragunov from his nap in a while. Come in, he yelled, lighting up a cigarette. The door opened and the secretary entered his office. The old spry woman handed him a sleek jet black envelope adorned with a white star and a cat. A letter just to you, sir. The secretary put the letter down on the table in front of Dragunov. He took it and started reading. Prime Mr. Yevgeny Dragunov. We would like to inform you that your services are no longer needed. An ordeal from before is hereby void. We have found a better provider for arms and other equipment, much cheaper than yours. We are cutting all funds and payments. San Jaba is Yolani, the great Pakan. As he finished the most peculiar letter, Dragunov's eyes shot wide open. What the heck is this? He calmly asked the secretary, sitting the letter down carefully. Well, sir, the courier told me he got it from a smiling man in a fur coat, but that's all I know. Sounds like Jabba. One la once a lousy gangster, always one, it seems. Yevgeny interrupted. He got out of his chair and began to pace around his office. Can't believe it. Those Ugarans sign a contract. Even thugs know how contracts work, he muttered to himself, lighting another cigarette. After a few minutes of complaining and pondering, he calmed himself down and looked out into the palace yard, where soldiers and workers were doing the job. We'll find another deal, hopefully, with some state less mess, uh, mercurial than that darnable thief territory, thought Dragunov out loud and to both himself and his secretary. Not like they even ordered much anyway. He com his comment was met with a silence for a while. But his old friend, the secretary, finally broke a silence. Shots of vodka, sir? Please, please, we can use it. After, offer the rest salvation. The Republic has now fallen. We will not integrate the Zatas Arms Factory to our administration and extend an offer of safety to the businessmen that agree to work following the Great Pecan's orders. Uh, yeah, we already had successful raids. We can't raid for a while. I don't know how strong these guys actually are. Oh, and there goes Ukta. Quite a bit of manpower. 37 divisions. Okay, not bad for them. Not bad for them. Too bad Ukta died. But then again, I mean, it was pretty easy, easy taking them down. But go figure, you know? Good, good, good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Scan your loot here, might as well. Uh, just in case, go and stop training for now. And if you need to, go and push in if you have to. And the five to me, yeah, basically, we're going to have to go to war with these guys. Do we have any spare planes? That would be quite beneficial. Oh, yeah, so it's 20. Very nice. Very, very nice. Not great. Not bad. Just. <laughs> not great. For more artillery, please. Yes, 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 yes. And if we can do some serious damage to him, that would be amazing. Now, hopefully, we can move in relatively quickly once, of course, the war has restarted, but hopefully, move in very quickly, actually. Go, 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 go. See, we can do gods of the north. Nothing but nonsense. Oh, go in there, maybe if you can. Oh, yes, beat them up if you can. I mean, it'd make a lot more sense if we could actually encircle them, but that's okay. Gustaze defeated. Very nice, very nice. Igor, there, that'd be quite good as well. Oh, another division. Oh, look at that. Nice. We have nine divisions. Jesus. That's very nice. Maybe we can raid someone eventually, too. Yes, no, maybe so. There you go. Keep up the attacks. They are they are pretty strong. They're probably, honestly, elite infantry and stuff like that, so. We'll see. A division encircled. Nice. Even though we're not really winning that much here, but whatever. Nice. Oh, actually, there you go. Now you do like that. There you go. That's much better. Train your workers, stuff like that. Scavenge for some looty booty. We've lost 4,000. They've lost 11,000, which is not too bad. Yeah, kill them off. If they want to do that, don't just kill them off too. You can have that tile. We'll take this one. Nice. All right, everyone. So I've already gone ahead and defeated them fairly and squarely, of course. Um, I made one mistake. Uh, and I cut it out of the recording. So yeah, I we defeated them. It just it was a little difficult. Um, yeah, I just had to retry basically things. 
again. But yeah, look at the stockpile. Not bad. We're out of manpower now, which sucks. We are trying to core their territory. We are trying to raid Bereniki. Bereniki? Is it Bereniki? But we just finished up off further our salvation. But expand the administration. We occupy more territory than ever before. We must start reforming administration, create a bureaucracy that is able to sustain our ambitions. Wow. Plus 1.25 political power. That's very useful. And of course, we want the raid. So we've got to get a little bit of time there. Our greatest enemy, though. The North is its nearly under our control. The only authority left other than us is our oldest enemy, Bokuta. Many of the ranks are motivated to get their revenge, and we're sure that everyone will fight with all their strength. Um, Death to Oligopoly. Ah, Harkov couldn't stop the trembling. Kakarasa, just be, be a man. Even West bringing insults himself to a man up didn't work. His mental state seemed to be faring, faring the worst of the group that was sat against the wall. Some of them he could not recognize, but others were sheer magnates. Uh, Faizulian. Considered one of the main bankers of all the Zatals, didn't seem to mind the uncomfortable position against the brick wall and said, looking up thoughtfully at the gray sky, Kozlov. The owner of several local steel manufacturers also seemed to be calm, writing something in his journal, his hand moving gracefully across the page. And then Hakov. What did they want from him? He was just a confectioner. A small one at that. He's a nobody. Just sold, sold sweets around Zatals, exported to a bit to Comey before that one turned into a mess. It was. What did they want? Try not to panic. He bit into his nails as several banded guards entered the small courtyard, machine guns over their shoulders. Uh, one of them with a facial scar looked over the list in his hand, looking up the businessman. Anyone with less than half a million rubles profit? Wait, half a million? Arkov never made up, uh, made beyond a quarter. Me, 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 he shouted, anxiously waving his hand, followed by the several others in the line. Well, come forward, the scar face screamed, waving them behind the line of machine guns. Arkov not sparing a second as he power walked past the guards up to Scarface. So what do you do? Scarface took out a pen, looking at the confectioner and the several other nobodies in the line behind him. I'm a confectioner. Oh, confectioner. There was a clack behind Harkov's back and he felt himself jump as a thundering roar of machine guns blasted into his ears. Heh, <laughs> we'll need those, I guess. The Scarface signed the slip, pushing it into Harkov's hands. Free to go. Now F off. As the confectioner walked out, his heart nearly bursting, he gave one last look behind him. All of the ones left in line. Vazulin's body sagged against the wall, his expression calm and unreadable. I'm just happy I'm not you. We would like to raid against those big old booties, but... Our final ride. The Ragnarok sat in his cell, grunting thoughtfully. There was a delivery contract that some warlord was expecting in Western Russia, and while at this point it would probably not matter, his sense of professionalism kept bugging him through the night. Hmm, he raised his eyes at Kalashnikov and then lowered them again. They were about the same age, but unlike Kalashnikov, the Ragnarok didn't have a family. In the end, he supposed it was his own fault. Mishka, Kalashnikov looked at him. The exhausted look on his face wrangling at the Ragnarok's soul. Sorry, Mishka, this is my fault. The Ragnarok sighed, rubbing his face. Christ, what had makes contact with these bloody bandits? Should have just taken some foreign murder. It's fine, Gina. Kalashnikov's voice sounded hollow. No, it's not like you could have foreseen this. And besides, we were both there when you made the decision. Not like you shut me up. I also thought using them was a good idea. Well, still, the Ragnarok went quiet as he heard some noise. Tap, 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 tap. A sound of boots. Soldiers. A creak of the metal bolts. The door opens. Kalashnikov out. A small arms designed to push himself up, his face as pale as snow, as he approached the doorway. He gave one last look over to his shoulder, the rug enough nodding to him. See you around, Mishka. See you, Gina. See ya, see ya, see ya. Yeah, we have high levels of resistance right now. We need a lot more manpower. Yeah. Expand the admin, though. Nice. Now, we get some serious political power here. Wait. Oh, they were defeated. God dang it. Oh, no. Can we raid other... I want to raid other people, please. Um, hopefully we can core Zotalis pretty quickly. That'd be good. And then we'll go to war with, uh, these guys probably. Let's see. Infiltrate the Gulags. Izialani proposed to use our agents to infiltrate the Vorkuta Gulag to assess the situation and find any weakness in the defense, even potentially staging an, an invasion to receive the manpower we desperately need. Oh, yeah. Also, I did convert these guys all to the same division template, so they're all Gvadeskaya Divizia. So, the basic engineers with artillery and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what they are. If we did this, we'd have nothing here, so... An important step. At the main heart of the Pankas, it was noisy as always. A thief was cleaning his pistols. Someone was playing cards for cigarettes, another was sitting leaning back in the chair and smoking them. After several campaigns, raids, and captures, everything was in the budget, but still, some kind of ghost of menace was wavering over them. The ghost of a dark past. The door creaked and began to open. Yabai Zulani and his closest subordinates came in. Many abruptly got up from their chairs. Some others put out the cigarettes and continued to sit, but everyone understood that he was not just with the best of news. Sit down, sit down, don't be afraid. I have just one announcement, brothers. Everyone obeyed the order of the chief. A chair was brought to Jabba. He sat down and took off his military cap, took a cigarette with a match from, some, from someone sitting in the room, and lit it. Well, gentlemen, today is an important day. We're going on another raid. Everyone smiled again, began to whisper, while Jabba looked at them with his many things and gaze. It's not for the loot. We're going to Vorkuta, to the gulags. The noise of a fallen gun, and later a body. The Pankas 
Apakhans, abruptly got up and saw the old prisoner of Voron lying on the floor. He was having a seizure, and he began to look for something near the bedside table. One of them went up to the lying Voron and opened a bottle of ammonia next to the nose of the fallen one. A minute passed, and there was more movement in the hut now than all the years before. Jabba was already standing over the awakened Voron with a cigarette in hand. The six-year-old man had seen the gulags under Bukharin, out of the failure of the front, and all the horrors of Vakuta under Kaganovich. He wanted to say something to Jabba, but his voice clearly died down. Jabba, having extinguished his cigarette from the ashtray on the nightstand, called his subordinates, put on his cap, and left the hut with him. Voron sat up, or got up, sat down on the bed with the help of others. He looked around at the thieves, looking anxiously, and then at the door, then at himself. Voron took the gun again, loaded it, and told everyone in the hut, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to shoot some of Lochin's cocksuckers. Ah, yes. Yum, yum. Uh, bail out the prisoners. Oh, yes. Our spies have reported that the guards are heavily outnumbered by the prisoners. We are ready to cause a breakout to get most of our remaining brothers out of Rakuta, spreading chaos and disunion to the organization of the NKVD. As we're building more cities up as well. So, Camarabo unites. Oh, look at that. Grand Prince of Poultry Central Siberia. It was Nova Siberia, I thought it was doing quite well last time. I hope the WRF does not win. Actually, I want Vyaka to win. I want Komi to win. Vyatka. Even the Brotherhood to win. I don't want Samara or the WRF to win. They always win. Fleeting men, Nestor sat out in the frozen prison yard alone. Only about 30 or so of his men were left here, excluding the fat red-faced guard. This was probably the worst mission you have ever been assigned to. Nestor Gudigorovich uh, had been ordered to infiltrate the Forkutin Reklag, a camp relatively close to the board, in an attempt to find as many military intel as he could. Those military plans still eluded him, but right now the mission was, was but one of its problems. And the Reichslag where there was a little but filth, desolation, extreme temperatures, and starvation. When he got here a few months ago, men filled every cell, but all but 29 of them died making rifles, starved, or shot for fun, or died of disease. The worst part, however, was the warden's office. Next to this office, the warden ran what seemed to be some sort of medieval dungeon. Grigorovich didn't know what was in there, but he did know how its victim sounded. The screams of pain weren't even the worst of it. What broke his heart was a be begging. At least once a day, he'd hear frail, pain voices pleading and beg not for their lives, but for their freedom, but simply for the pain to end. Men would plead and plead, promising to work harder to eat less, anything for the torture to end. They almost always died. Nesta Grigorovich needed to get out of here, but he needed to know what Vulcan was planning first. He had finally located the warden's official office, in between the bouts of sa sadism. He was working with the Vorkota Military Affairs Commission. The Kadja was sitting on the months of top-secret military information. That afternoon, however, he had set aside a couple of hours to help the warden do terrible things to young Vashkir, leaving his office wide open. The wiry agents snuck past cell blocks and mess halls, inching closer to the door, even passing by the warden's quarters. The noises he heard shook him too close to the core, but continued, finally reaching his target an office full of intel. Mister wanted to no time, wasted no time, grabbing everything he could. Hold, files, loose papers, anything of value to the Ugrin military. As the Bashkir boy's screams filled his ears, he slinked back into the hallway, hands, shirt, pants, shoes, and underwear bulging with papers. In a moment of mad genius, the desperate agent decided to climb into the ventilation, crawling through nearly a kilometer of vi vent piping. After an hour of slowly making his way through the boiling shafts, he found himself outside the building. Finally, he would be free. He ran through the same hole in the fence he had entered through, still not patched up by the guards and left the gulag. Those pleading men would live on in him as fuel for the destruction of this accursed place. May God have mercy on us all and scout the territory. The territory of Vakota is extremely harsh. Most men would normally freeze if sent out without directions. We must cut the region so that we can use this weather to our advantage. Hey, look, more guns. Um, oh, we actually filled up everything here. We definitely need more fighters. I definitely need more of this as well. Boom, and then boom. Oh, nice. And then maybe do that. But we definitely want a lot of fighters, but I definitely want a lot of cast. So that would be the kind of the cast collection down there. Uh, let's go to three. One is fine for now. Motorized is good enough. Bail out the prisoners. Oh, look at that map. Oh, we must have cored uh, Zatas too. Awesome. Uh, we haven't done poverty, which is fine. So we'll probably just keep going with... Agriculture's not bad. Industrial improvement is going doing extremely well right now. Extremely, extremely well. So we'll go from power tools. Oh, wow, that's really bad. Holy crap, that's so bad for output and speed. Through rudimentary stuff. And hopefully we can upgrade ourselves. Well, I don't want to do this yet. I want to get better industrial equipment first. Let's wait two months first. Get this upgraded all the way. Or I guess, yeah, two more months now. And then do it again so we can get some more benefits. We love benefits. Heavy snow event? Yes. It was a normal uh, morning in the camp when Yugura and his team were ordered to go on what seemed like a routine patrol. They were leaving that afternoon. The orders were clear. Scouts of uh, the outskirts of Vorkuta map out all guard posts and investigate for possible weak points in their lines. When they set up from the camp, uh, Yura and his men were in a state of ecstasy. They were hoping for an excellent adventure. Some of them wondered how many men they could kill or if they were going to see something at all. As time passed, the grim reality of Siberia set in. As the sharp freezing winds embraced their bodies, they could only wonder when this would be over. Yoro remembered easier times, remembering, remembered sitting by the campfire when he was younger, the stories of his father before the war. They would sit, how they would sit by the chimney and skip the cruel winter. Yoro hoped that this would soon be over so he could go back to the camp and end his godforsaken mission. Better times ahead, of course. 
Nice. Very, very, very nice. Time for revenge. Our plan is ready. The guards are experiencing infighting in the ranks, and Blochin is probably pissing himself. Now it's time for some sweet, sweet revenge. Like some, uh, arm XP. Nice. Or, worst person, not arm XP. Nine divisions ain't too bad. Not too bad at all. Yeah, the guns are looking good. Artillery's looking not too bad either. Oh, there goes Vyatka. Goodbye, Vyatka. Shatter the remaining guards. Despite our victory against Vorkuta, some pockets of resistance still hold out in the region. We must invest some of our forces to end the remaining guards. Pretty much. Pretty much. Svedlovsk is dying. Oh, man. Also, is going to be a pain in the butt to kill off, too, but whatever. Uh, where are we at? Yeah, just give it one more month. We'll be good. So, if you have six extra, does that roll over? I don't know. We'll see. Happy 1965, though, everybody. Hope you're having a great, great year. Lots of resources, though. It's very nice. Yeah, that shouldn't be very hard, is it? A thousand died already. Not bad. Ah, Vorkuta. Hey, it's Bennett. Bennett man. Oh, yeah, keep attacking us. See what you like. Now oh, the shield broken, huh? Hey, we captured the, go the go logs. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Oh, actually, uh, yeah. Oh, that's a big wow. I've never seen the Jewish state literally envelop all but the center of Madagascar. That is weird. Scam as you can. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you want a bit better industrial expertise, please go ahead. Despite a victory against Vokuta, some pockets of resistance to hold on in the region. We must invest some of our forces and the remaining guards. The demon of Vokuta. The eternal dude, it's between our hands. Many are willing to make them suffer all the evil this world for all the crap he made us go through. We'll make sure that he will uh, scream with all of his heart. Or with all the air that remains in his lungs before he takes his last breath. Looking, starts looking south. Now that the north is completely pacified, it's time to look south, where the old guard, the Stalinists, and the League were fighting against each other. We'll take advantage of the ongoing conflict to strike them where it hurts the most. Judgment. Gazimir pleaded desperately, but it was of no use, as the dude sneered at him, laughed at him. As the, as the crimes he supposedly committed were read out loud one by one. How had he ever gotten into this situation? When did the dudes get so organized? Kazimir Kozlov for ten counts of homosexuality, three counts of treason, and one count of each of murder, rape, and incest. He was sentenced to death. The rascal in the center dressed like a judge booms, slamming a makeshift gavel onto the table in front of him. He could only gape as the whoops and cheers got louder and louder until he was grabbed by the scruff of his neck by several scrawny henchmen and dragged off the court just as an assortment of fruit began to be pelted at him. Blindfold and handcuffed, the panicked man could only sputter out desperate insults, looking for a chance, any chance for them to let go of him so he could make a break for it. Not so cocky now, aren't you? A familiar voice to his right muttered menacingly, I'll never forget the day you murdered my friends, you effing coward. Casimir groaned as he was shoved to the ground roughly, feeling something sharp graze his sides as he tumbled to the floor. Say hello, a second boy said. Do you know home until you die, coward? His blindfold was swiftly removed and realization set in quickly as Casimir stared at the pit of cement ahead of him. The former guard who could kill emotionlessly could barely speak coherent sentences as he was reduced to quite the sorry state, begging for his life and breaking down in tears as he used every last ounce of energy he had attempted to break free of the thieves' iron grip, but to no avail. Please let me go. I'll do anything. I swear I'll be your slave. I'll clean your toilets. I'll do anything. So please don't kill me. His pleas for help were promptly silenced as he was dumped in the pit, his final minutes spent flailing pathetically in the rapidly hardening cement, much to the amusement of the bandits. The poor man would continue to sink deeper and deeper into the pit until all that was left uncovered would be a single hand sticking out of the now solid pit pool of cement, frozen and unmoving. A fitting end. So now, now this is a two. So does so you do roll over the extra six that we had we went eight at two thirty eight and goes up to two forty. So the extra six does roll over, so that's good to know. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah. The old guard, Sverdlovsk, Tiamen, Omsk. Yeah, we'll see what happens. This is not going to be easy. But if we can core of Okuta fast enough, it'll be good. The trial blocking. Vasily Mikhailovich Blokin, the administrator, lay down on a cold floor. His, rib broken, his broken rib reverberating with painful pulses in his chest, his caved and skull screeching with a migraine. His lisps whispering obscenities, even when he had long lost his strength to stand or even shot, the hunger swallowed his innards. 
Those dudes, those little dudes, who gave them the right to even touch him? Those subhumans, those other drugs of society, who are they to put him on trial? He had done no wrongdoing, no crime. There was no skin off his nose with these thrice darn dogs that I think of him. If it were his call, each one of them would be back toiling the gulag. He served justice to them all of them, so who were they to think that they had any right to serve uh, this parody to him? The steel door of his cell opened with a whining creak, one of the guards spearing in, giving Bloke in a couple painful spokes with the barrel of his rifle. A sound voiced, a voice sounded from behind the door. Hey, still up? Uh, the guard poked Bloke in again, a traitor's pain grunt escaping the administrator's lungs. Yeah, the guard giggled drunkenly. Well, a few more days without food, and he'll certainly kick him. Bloke felt the boat slam into his side, his broken rib igniting with a roaring agony, his voice rising to a pitiful shout. Good night, Papasha. Don't keep the Reaper waiting, the guard laughed, the sound of his boots disappearing behind the steel door, leaving Bloken alone with his enraged thoughts. Justice in one form or another. That's a lot of manpower. These guys both have more manpower than us. I kind of hope that these guys take out Omsk, and then we can invade pretty quickly. Um, yeah. So if you want to read about the old guard, please go right ahead. Oh, no, 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 oh, God. Uh, Stalin's bootleggers. Uh, and there's the red government itself. It is a previous, if the previous Bukharan regime did not teach anyone anything. These ones said that maybe even Bukharan did not go far enough. Then, even then, their industrial capacity and mountain power could be useful and better, or rather our hands, the old guard. Uh, the Red Army, a failure of the previous age, stands their way in the south, still holding on to a belief that they are somehow above all else, or above all this. Well, for the self delusion, they're still a sturdy foe, shattered the league. And for desert, the Omskavite fanatics, and the crippled general. It's hard to tell what their actual goal is. Barely any word escapes the Karapas city and its bunkers. Well, let's open it up and take a look. An offer. The two men stared at each other closely, seemingly looking into the other's eyes as if they were trying to read the thoughts. General Pavel Batov looked at the letter in his hands, the great... Pak Han, sitting in front of him, was demanding his surrender before war had even properly started. Mr. Iosiliani, you address me as great Pak Han. I will do no such thing. We sit here today as equals. You have asked for my submission. You offer me mercy and say that our men will have a chance for glory, but the men of the Third Army do not wish for glory and money. What is there to steal in this impoverished land but from our own people? Red, 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 Red Army only has one purpose, to serve Russia no matter the cost. General Batov, I urge you to reconsider. We are not the bandit rabble that you believe us to be. The Bratvas just that, a brotherhood. We are not merely a mafia, not merely another p petty fiefdom. And any thief worth his honor will die for the Bratva without a second thought. Your choice is simple. We will crush your army one way or another. Whatever, whether you outlive it is up to you. Deluded fool, in which we have gone to war with Sverdlovsk now. Now, luckily, these guys have been killing each other off pretty darn well. I decided, you know what? These guys do have more divisions, and if these guys are distracted by Omsk, especially when these fellas do have a literal tank division, and we've got none, and Omsk has none, I'd rather have us double team Sverdlovsk actually in the end. But like I said before, we uh, you know fade to fade out. If you want to read about uh, Shadow of the League, please go ahead. Also, I did. Uh, Take a little bit of a break between this part and the last part where I faded in, faded out. And actually, three of the devs for the mod, for the mod, the CTE, the community expansion for TNO, actually commented. And uh, if they're still watching, thank you. thank you. Thank you for watching and thank you for making the mod. I look forward to all the expansions that this mod and other mods can get up to in the future. Wow, not bad. But uh, yeah, keep it up. I love seeing what mod developers can do, especially for mods like TNO. Oh, so good. Hey, thanks for Svedlosk, though. Thank you for Svedlosk. Because now Omsk is going to kill us while we are going to try to kill them. Pacify, or pacificate, the military zone. It seems that even the glorious Red Army couldn't come out victorious against us. The iron must be beaten while it is hot. And we should not let the remnants become partisans. Catch every single dude. Oh, and we love looting for booty. Ah, it's our favorite thing. We love booty here. We'll see what happens. We do have 11 divisions, and they are all infantry divisions. They're 19 combat, which is not bad. They got one thing of Ati. Actually, since I can picture, we got more. Ooh, more anti anti tank. Ooh, we got plenty of guns. We need more, some more motorized. That's not too bad. Fighters not terrible. Inse interceptors. I don't believe in TNO. Uh, attack bombs would be fine, but I prefer cast personally. And now we've gone to war with them as well. So ooh, I have these. Some APCs. Sign us up. Yes, please. Oh, they attack us, huh? Oh well. I mean, it would help if we actually did this too. There you go. Go ahead. See what you can do. They attack us. We attack them. Circle of life. Live. Love. And we have the Ural Automotive Plan captured. Onwards, my friends, onwards. After that, eliminate the fanatics. We have cracked the Black City's asphalt exterior and let the rot spill over all over the snow. It is not even ideology, but evil, simple rage and wrath or fear of their leadership that guides these men towards their death. This cannot do. The fanatics shall be isolated and the rest need to be shaken out of their hateful stupor. Beautiful, my friends, but yeah. I love seeing submods for TNO. I love it, love it. I love TNO. Like, I don't know. It just, I don't know why I love it. It just... It is what it is. I enjoy it so much, though. I enjoy it so much. It's one of the mods that I'm like, I could spend a lot of time here. I could spend, I, and I have spent a lot of time here. All right, agriculture. Thank you. Come again. Oh, oh, encircled. Destroyed. Lovely. 
Wow, we actually took out a lot of arms without even getting arms. Holy crap. This is one of the funnest words I've done in a while. Especially the time recording. The band and the soldier, though. Bob Tov sighed as he looked at Isilani, the great Pakans, grinning back at the general. So, what do we have here, hmm? No more uniform-clad lads to throw at me. Isilani was swiggled from his bottle, chuckling. Bartov clenched and unclenched his fists, his expression darkening. I will not let you rule these people, you darn scum. This is all a farce, a disgusting farce. Isiliani, listen carefully, placing the bottle down next to the table, lagging and observing Bartov with an interested look. You will surprise me, old boy. Bartov's lips turned to, into a thin line. Blokin cursed me because I was a bandit. Dragunov never intended to continue working with me. To him, I was a useful hammer to swing around at his possible enemies. The crappers or the dogs and the free aviators just had nothing to fight back with but you. Isiolani chuckled. Eh? You are led by the people. Bartov lifted up his eyes, his jaw clenched. Yes, in the end, I shall serve the Russian people, because that is what the military is for, damn it. Not for kicking people down, not for terrifying them into submission. It is to protect them, and I will not let scum like you suck the lifeblood out of the nation. Isiolani listened before going quiet and looking to the side, scratching his bearded cheek. You are a weird one, you are. Ha! I suppose we can work with that. The great Pakhan sat forward, staring the general in the eye. Oh, thief's word means a lot in this world, old boy. I promise to work for the people if you work for me. We need all the expertise after all. Batov sighed, looking away. Isiolani picked up the bottle and stood from the table. I'll give you time to think, old. Batov interrupted. If that, if what you say is true, wow, we actually get him as a security minister. Military leader cost. Was not expecting that. And so now we can form the West Siberian Thief Territory. Uh, just in case, I'm gonna, I like to go through the entire book history first and then be able to do that, but in with the older. Anatoly Chikasov dropped the rifle into the corner of the room like a student drops a school bag after a long day, nodding to the great Pakan and then acknowledging Bogdab with a confused look. Afternoon, sir. What have you called me in for? Isiliani was uh, laid back in his armchair. His boots up on the desk, though he was slightly less drunk than usual, eyeing Anatoly with a smirk. Well, let's rip the splinter out, Chikasov. You're demoted. The great Pakan's words rippled through Chikasov. The casual pronunciation of the life-changing order filling him with even greater hopelessness. Sir, I, from now on, you are not security minister, you are general. Now, F off, that's all I have to say. Sir, I've served. We took Fokuta, we took Zlatos, I didn't understand. As Ileani's expression changed. As he sat forward and stood up, rolling up in a map, lines all over it. See, that's why you're going out, Tolia, you, you don't understand. Crap. As Ileani's hand went over the map, before slamming a fist down on a piece of paper. This, this was your operation to take Zlatos, and guess what, Tolia? If I had that man... Isuliani's finger, uh, is finger lifted, pointing at Baktov. In your seat, we'd have taken it faster, safer, and cheaper. That's not a maybe, Tolia. You're just crap here, so if you were about to argue, shut your effing trap and be happy that your skills are enough to keep you as a general. Got it? Cherkasov Cherka turned from red to blue to a snow white pale. Certainly, sir. Anatoly lifted his eyes, nodding to Baktov. Good, good luck. The ex-security minister stumbled out of the room, forgetting his rifle. A short silence bought off open his mouth. That was one way to dismiss the minister. Isiliani grimaced, sitting back down into the armchair. For all my love, when it comes to the army. Com underscore flavor dot thirteen dot eight. I love that response. I love it. And end Stalinism once and for all. The Bukhara night after birth is no more. Now we are now to this experiment off the face of the world. No more centralization. No more personality cults. No more imprisonment. Stalin had died decades ago, and glorifying a dead man's ideas won't do the people any good at all. Now Kursk faces and reunites the Far East. Well, good luck. Because it's still anyone's game here. And I don't know why I just pulled a hair out of my mouth. Sorry. It was between my teeth. I don't know. As, anyways, Black Dusk. The Great Trial is now a pipe dream. Yazov has failed to destroy Germany and avenge Russia. Yazov, the great leader of the Black League, now disheveled, was a shell of his former self. He failed to defeat a rabble of mere gangsters and thugs. This was an embarrassment for the hardened and ultra militaristic Black League. Now Yazov and his loyal officers were at the mercies of Ugras, gangsters in the ruins of Omsk. Many of Yazov's fellow officers were defiant at the gangsters, even at gunpoint. Yelling obscenities and insulting at the captors, Yazov, however, accepted his fate. Izzyolan, who is observing his men of the captured Black League leadership, gestures his men to take Yazov to him and execute the others. The men oblige, taking Yazov to him, while the others are forcibly lined up to a wall and gunned down. You know, I admire your resolve and dedication, Izzyolania. Wow. Izzyolani. Says, impressed by the Black League and the zeal in fighting the enemies, Yazov says nothing, clearly distraught at the defeat of the Black League, and how the Great Trial will never, of course, happen now. Hey, don't give me that look. Maybe in another life I lose, and you succeed. Just kill me. I can't live with this failure. The defeated Glakovac states, Izzyolani obliges and holsters his TT-33. At the same time, he takes out a pack of cigarettes. Cigarette? Izzyolani offers handing Yazov a cigarette. Yazov reaches it out with his hand. The Stolen Trial. 
Nice. And that's a good train as well. And I don't want to be bothered with making more divisions for now. Uh, we only, Oh, God. We have only eight army XP. That sucks. <laughs> that else suck arenas. And I hurt my hands. What the heck? Cool. Ending stones and once and for all would probably be a very, 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 very good thing. But the bandit's victorious. It is a long road from the frigid north, but we have done it. Both the Reds and the Fanatics are out of the way. Now it is time to rebuild and repair for the future onslaught that shall come to our east and west. Onwards, my friends. Onwards. As we shall build up more cities. Because you, me... Nothing better than a city. Well, maybe a cigarette. Even though I don't smoke. But I've been told that's pretty good stuff. And if we ever have enough stuff to build, or never have enough stuff to build, we'll build a lot of radar stations, because... We can. I'd love to raid more, but... Maybe not now. Maybe later. Oh, scavenger loot. Uh, I don't know how long we're going to be here. I'd rather save a political power, probably, because we have just one more month of stuff, and then that'll be it. Shattered Hammer. Lazar Kaganovich had once been a name that struck fear across the Urals, the entire city of Tumen. Swore loyalty exclusively to him, and his orders were followed by all. His people could never fall, for they believed in true communism. That was the case until a thief territory proved him wrong. Ugar had thoroughly destroyed his nation, and his government was dead or now in custody. Kaganovich himself was being led away from his cell in solitary confinement, a horrible cl little closet full of mold, rat, dung, and other filth. The communist dream would cease seemingly would end here in this courthouse. The jury rigged holding cell turned courtroom assembled in an empty hall of the prison where he would surely see his end. His jailers roughly dragged the former general secretary to the dock, a wooden chair that he was promptly handcuffed to. He had no expectation that the trial would be fair, just as the Ugarans had done with other state endings. The biggest thief of them all was here to pass the sentence himself. Nazar Gaganovich, you've been found guilty of murder and treason against the thief territory. Your sentence is death. A bullet went through his mouth before he could open it. Shortly afterwards, Nikita Khrushchev, another member of the Kaganovich government, was dragged into the block and handcuffed to the same bloodstained chair. Friends, friends, I'm sure there's a misunderstanding here. Obviously, old Lazar was a traitor, but surely we can settle this on neutral girl. Khrushchev came out swinging, but that quickly was shut down by Izioliani. We're not open to negotiations, Mr. Khrushchev. We are interested only in your death and corn. Khrushchev, seeing that this was his end, was here, relented. I'd prefer an open casket, if that's all right. Better dead <clears throat> than good old red. Cool, and we're right here, so we'll go from basic mechanization to mass mechanization, which would be very, very, very nice. I can't wait to improve poverty. We have a lot of political power, which is I love, 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 love. Probably too much political power, but you know what? Death. If you take it away, it is what it is. I personally wouldn't like it taken away, but hey, it's your mod, and I'm enjoying it. Of course, if they're still watching. And if you're still watching, thank you very much. Ah, oh, true miracle. The noise shook the bar. The soldiers drank and sang. The girls danced on the tables with the guys. Oh, thank goodness. The gang leaders uh, were discussing business at a separate table. Among them were Usulian, Usulian, Iziolani, and others. There were very nice bunkers and arms. Couldn't we use it as headquarters? Surely there are weapons there. We'll search, find, and sell. Maybe do these Frenchmen or whoever they are, said Usulian, drinking another glass. All right, gentlemen, I'm going outside. Jabba lead, or left the building, he lit a cigarette, and began to look around. Dark, starry, sorry, city night. Right in front of him was a residential neighborhood built up on a Bukharan. There were lights on in the windows, but the street were empty. A small Soviet town, it is in his power, as Yolani took another pull. He remembered the gulags, he remembered Blokin, he remembers the frigid or rigid prison system, but now, he is the king of the system, he rules everything, and he can do more. The thoughts of greatness invigorated Jabba. Through the thorns to the stars, from the dirt to the princess, from nothing to everything, Jabba took several deep puffs of his cigarette again. After finishing smoking, he threw the butt away near the entrance to the bar. Adjusting his cap, checking his gun, and went into the bar again. It's time to celebrate properly to get back to business again. Zavodi Shermanku. Nice. Region development. Oh, thank goodness it is here. Now let's go and reunite ourselves first. Reunification of Russia? Yes. We are in total control of all its major cities in western Siberia. The great Pakan joyfully declared our victory. Now the world should see what the bandits are truly are capable of. Non net post chadi. Nice. Well, I don't like uh Overextended administration, but look at that. Ugra unifies West Siberia. Against all odds, the thieves and law of Ugra have descended from their territories in the frigid north of Russia to take the entire region of West Siberia. Though all numbered from the start, the thieves fought, tricked, bribed their way from prisoners to rulers. So far, we know little about the peculiar state in its future, however. Today, the great Paka of the newly declared West Siberian Thief Territory, a Georgian by the name of Jabba Izulyani, has announced that the thieves ultimately hope to reunify all of Russia and become its protectors and saviors already. They begin to open their borders to trade. It seems they are hoping to make a great deal of money in their new positions. Where is the police? Working for us? Oh, well, weekly stability would be pretty nice, I'll be honest. Our professionalism, agriculture, poverty, heavy machinery, D, D, D. Uh, work again. Yes, bonus industry would be very good. Uh, we could get industry. We have honest. We have enough BP. Cool. Exit influence. No. 
Economic issue? Ooh, look at all this stuff. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you, devs. The unlikely victory. Oh, look at that. Oh, very cool. After years of fighting, we've achieved what no other country on earth thought possible. You grew in control over West Siberia. Your Vorkutas, Latos, Vedlosk, Tiumen, and Omsk have been destroyed, subjugated, and integrated into the thief territory. And a small warlord city is now fledging war old power. Let us celebrate. We must prepare a feast. Oh, look at that. That's very nice. Yay. The Victory Feast. Oh, no, Warlord. Recruitment's gone. Meat, cheese, fresh vegetables. All the food of West Siberia is at our fingertips. All the suit calls for one thing, a giant feast. We will get every gourmet morsel. Every choice cut, every bit of good new food left, and eat all of it. Prepare the tables, the chairs. All of it must be made ready for our feast of feast. God bless the West Siberian Thief Territory. God bless Russia. Look at that nice manpower we got now. Uh, for this stuff, uh, for now, we're going to boost stuff up quite a bit, so... Uh, keep building, 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 building. Um, yeah, it's not bad. It's not great. Seeing as, yeah, it is what it is. Um, go with four for now as well. That'd be worth it. Oh, look at that flag. That's a really nice flag. Huh. Pretty cool. Yes. More PP, please. Thank you. And... Uh, unforeseen developments. Of course, it seems that her pride proceeded to fall. Another player, Aslan Usoyan, has shown his face. The Kurdish spider decided he would be a better believer than Izzyoyani, and has shown his hand. As we speak, he has begun to make moves against our government and towards his own quest for power. Who should rule? The Bakan or Bakans or Newface? Someone with his own vision for the future. If you wonder about Caffeine Flow, please go ahead and toast your future success. After a lucky victory, tensions between Izzyoyani and Usoyan reach a new high, and a conflict is inevitable. We get two events. Oh, two for one, huh? Still, one point. Almost two political power every single day is not terrible. Not bad. Just want more army XP. Oh boy. Gotta make your boys thicker. A noisy night. A gang of bandits rushed to the hall. They were carrying expensive liquor. Most of them were drunk after looting and drinking most of the alcohol they found in an old warehouse. As they sat down, they sat in a large dining hall. The realization of their achievement set in. They wondered how his conqueror would, conqueror would celebrate such an occasion. A feast, the old Nikolai shouted. He remembered hearing stories of old kings holding massive feasts for important events. The men agreed and they wanted to feel like the stars of old. Everything they could find would go for it. They slaughtered cattle, looted more liquor stores, and graved the most expensive cigars they could find. They were going to dine like kings and nothing was going to take this joy from their hands. Nostrovia, our future. Even with an active power struggle within our government, we still have a country to run. As a sole controller of a good part of Russia, we now have many, many mouths to feed, many new thieves, soldiers, and officials to placate, and the potential to forge a new free Russia. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool, 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 cool. 20 and 3. Awesome. Very good, very good, very good. Keep building, building, building. Uh, it's not bad, not bad. That's the 36 billion. is not too bad. 2 billion is not terrible yet. It's going to get worse and worse and worse as time goes on, but that's okay. Oh, look at that. we got more army XP now, too. Wales unified. Oh, with England. Good job, Wales. Nice to see that you defy decided to unite. All right. Now we're going to ruin ourselves here. There you go. 29 combo with, which is something combo with I would never, ever, 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 ever. Ever probably use the Indonesian War. Oh, very cool. Unforeseen developments. Izzyolani stumbled out of the hangar where another uh, victory feast was being held, doubling over and vomiting, the alcohol running through his veins, expelling itself. The night was dark and silent, aside from the shouts and light coming out of the hangar door. The great Pakan tensed up at hearing the crunching or crunch of footsteps behind him. His hand quickly finding his pistol and looking over his shoulder. Ah, Raphael. Izzyolani's face was stony as he strained it out and looked around. Checking for people listening in, and slightly pushed the door closed, nodding to the underling, allowing him to speak. Raphael's eyes darted around. Yeah, but we have Usoyan's accountant under our control. Is Yolani's face lit up as he stirred? Well, lovely stuff. Just a little more, and that Kurdish snake will be show its head. Yeah, but the Pakans are making moves. Ah, crap, Raph, be specific to the feast they'll go. Some are stealing weapons, some are deviating from patrolling routes, some are setting up bases where they aren't supposed to. And the single person now goes back to Yolani. I think this may be the beginning of something big. Is Yolani looked off into the dark, the haze of alcohol quickly being replaced with cold determination. But, Raph, get my coat. What? We've been making, we've been waiting for this opportunity, Ralph. That darn Kurt is going to get his due. All of them are going to get their due. The great Pecan stride lost any of the drunk slowness as he walked away from the hangar. Ralph, we're gonna go snake hunting. Oh wow, look at this. This is really cool. The wolf and the spider. Influence zero. End of the struggle. The end of the struggle approaches, and one of the most influence will come out on top. We better save here and uh, figure out who we want. We actually might try to get both sides. So, uh, uh, spider save. So. Hey, let me know in the comments below if you want me to try to get both sides. Because they... I, I'm not opposed to getting try to get both sides. So, 
Let me know if we should get both sides here. Ooh, reduce the strain. I want to get reduce the strain. Our duty to the thieves. The thieves in the law are by far the most important people in our territory. They are by far the most effective by our decisions, and we must work to aid them at all costs. The power struggle. The cracks are forming. The divisions have begun. Jabba Izzyliani, the great Pakan, the visionary, the man of the people, the military man. As men are in the top rungs, his officers are in the military. Their names are on plaques and on official lists. The crowd rests on his head. The crown rests on his head. As his tendrils sneak through the lands, tying everything back to him. The Georgian wolf, his fangs grasping region to region, trying to hold his allies together with a sure but loose grip. Ideals love him, pragmatists pragmatist, tolerate him, and the average avoir uh, zancon respects him. There will be place for all gangsters if they have the wit or strength for it. On the other hand, Aslan Uzuyan, the businessman, knows the truth. The thief and the civi can never be equal. The Kurdish spider's financial webs have been built up through the regions, each vibration of his business is webbing, giving Aslan more and more confidence in his power. If Izzyolani wants each gang on, to, on its own, Aslan shall have their powers under him. If Izzyolani wants civilians to join the ranks, Aslan will not tolerate the farm animal. Join the farmer. If anyone is a thief, no one is. Side with these guys? Oh, crap. Uh, we're going to go with Izzyolani for now. Meet with Pakan, so 40... Uh, raises Izzyolani's influence by Lomont. Izzyolani's... I don't know if I'm saying that right. his name right, so we'll see. Lowers his influence by a little bit. Oh, that's not bad. You get more army XP too. I like that. The effort list. What the heck is the effort list? Gazma of Ephem. The Kamchatsky Ephem. Abadzi Ephem. Izzyolani threw a knife, hitting a perfect bullseye on the dark board while Raphael read off the names of Usulian's cronies and noted down the death orders that the great Pakan pronounced as easy as he pronounced the swear. You sure about Abdazi? Izzy Oliani looked paused as he took out another knife, turning to his right-hand man with a disgruntled expression. Now, why would I be unsure, Raf? Hmm? Raphael gulped. That didn't mean anything behind it, just saying the guy had connections to the Georgian. Izzy Oliani cut Raphael off with a lifted hand. Raf, I said we're going to stink hunting, right? Right, right. Then why are you going to give me so much effing thought, hmm? Sure, a, th a snake can be a very good decoration, especially if it's exotic, but why should I keep a venomous son of a gun and risk any bets when I can tear the effort's head off, hmm, Raf? The right-hand man gave a nervous huff. Look, all I'm saying, we shouldn't go full Bukhara on this, you know. Let's not shoot ourselves in the leg just because they don't let a line with us. It's a war, Raf, and there's no quarter given or taken. Now either the man F up and keep reading or get the F out. It's the he turned back to the dartboard, flicking another knife at it, the blade hitting the hilt of the previous dagger and bouncing off. The great Pakan continued, we leave one Usan crony, he'll sprout two more. Two will turn into four, and soon his business BS will be all over us again. Yes. So continue, right? Abraham? Ephem. Nice. An accident happens. The power of struggle is thrown the country into a period of instability. The Pakans are scheming, the bands are killing each other in the streets, and most order is lost. During this time, major accidents will sh uh, happen, um, and balanced power sh may shift. He's making his move. Thinking about tomorrow. Is the on? He looked at the coin he twirled beneath his between his fingers, flicking it on the table. It's spinning with a small ring before slamming it down and repeating the same no motion over and over as his thoughts drifted for the first time in many years. He had been, he had been Pakan, even before he gained a great and got a capital letter. The truth of the gulag was simple: get the loyal in power, get the strong under you, make sure your sucker ups keep their heads down. It was easy to be Pakan if you had the strength for it, but being the great Pakan. He had thought for a band of aimless men with fists for weapons. Now they had to command an army. When before he just needed to feed himself and his goons for a day or two. The flowers on the desk talked of deep tones of flour, and rice that would go to women and children in the cities. When before a mistake could at worst lead to a couple of kicked in heads, now a nation balanced on the razor. The great Pakan slammed the coin down and looked at the surface of the face of Nicholas II, staring back at a rare keepsick that one of his thieves found on the ground in Forkuta. Izzy Alani blinked. For a small fraction of a second, that face displayed the rotten sard morphing into his own smiling victoriously. The great Pakan looked at the coin again and smirked. Glory did not wait for him to get comfortable, but ran ahead, and, see the, and he laid catch up. Past the recruited cards, past the communes and the Omskavite fanatics, past his comp competition, Izzy continued to chase that spark. Glory did not wait for anybody. Izzy stood out, flipping the coin and stuffing it into his jacket pocket, so he'll continue giving chase. And our duty to Russia. We're a real country now, so let's act like it. Operating simply as armed mobs just may have worked when we all, all we had was Yugura, but now we've got thousands of miles under our feet. We needed to find structure for our government, for the sake of our people, our government, and for the world stage. Nice. Uh, a strange assassination. Yeah, civilian war sport, so why not? Oh, we can't do that one. Oh. Uh, stabilize the government. Oh, business restructuring. Raphael said a sense of deja vu. Songs you read off new lists of names, noting at Izzyliani's new orders. Gorgenidze. Hmm, Minister of the Interior. Voronov. Ah, oh, that crapper. Stick him into the Ministry of Agriculture somewhere at the bottom. Let's make him eat crap. De Decanosedze. Well, it's quite a good officer. I think he deserves a good time in financing. Is he on e? Who had just uh, been up to leaning back in his chair, would sit forward and stretch yawning. Raphael looked at the time. It's quite late in the night, Jabba. Maybe we should finish tomorrow. Is he on e? lifted his eyes in a tired manner. Right, give me a rundown of the remaining candidates. Raphael quickly lifted eye the list. Some Georgians who sided with you over Uzo Yan, and a Russian officer who crossed lines and flipped to our side. The great Pakan stood from his seat. Picking up the bottle on the table and heading towards the exit. Stuff them somewhere in the military office, and the Russian can go into agricultural low levels as well. Raphael blinked. 
uh, pronouncing nervously. Uh, Jebel, maybe we should rethink this. Are we not rushing things? Isidani turned his head, the door to the dark outside already. Opened, giving his right-hand man just going to look. Well, they're going to be loyal. Who gives a crap where they are? Oh, uh, I guess he did some of his stuff. Well, that's not good. Our duty to these favor... Oh, one party state. Oh, I like that. Those we protect. Oh, poverty gets better. Squeeze them dry. Oh, I like squeezing them. Hmm, squeeze me. Uh, pensions. Oh, that's not bad, too. We our duty to Russia first. Try that. Oh, back, back up to 60. Nice. Uh, maintain the current government. Low government support. Support. Political power. Um, I wanted to do. I do want to reduce the strain as much as possible. So, our duty to the people. Let's do a favor. Azalea on these cliche or loyalists. Uh, that probably means clique, not cliche, but probably clique here. Uh, is Jabba Izuyani had led us as long as we've needed a ne leader, and now the fat Kurt Usoyan wants to dispose him. We cannot allow the stretcher to, to who and what we are, uh, to whom and what we are. It's, it's time to fight for a great pecan. Let's get to work. Can allow the stretcher to whom? Hmm, kind of a weird sentence structure. Give a speech. Redraw the provinces. Well, with our recent expansion into substantially more territory than we had previously held, it's time to set up our provinces accordingly. With well, the current bureaucratic stream we suffer from, a proper and proportional redistribution of our territory to our thieves will both bolster our popularity and reduce our burdens. Nice. Oh, that here. oh wait, what? We don't have either one? I'll go that one. And we'll go that one. Why not? It's all about building right now. Build, 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 build. Build, build, build. Yeah, redraw the provinces and they come down here. Uh, it's not bad. 10%. Establishing a legitimacy is pretty good to do as well. So we'll go here, and we'll go here. A lot of public meetings. We get some more political power. We get some more stability. I think that'd be pretty good to do as well. So, Looking pretty good. 70 for now. Not bad. Home for the thief. Our territory is meant for us, the thieves, the people, the Russians, and the Eurasians. Ooh. All of us make our home here, and it belongs to no one other than us. The thief territory can, can be, will be, must be the home of the thief in law. Uh, for this bread, we thank thee. Great, great, great. Political power, manpower, and guns. Our reunification of Russia. We get out of the way for our political situation to improve. We need guns, artillery, anti tank. Uh, actually, my bad tanks are looking pretty okay as well. I do want to use some tanks here. I love tanks. I don't care about uh, IFEs though. Support equipment's not too bad either. You draw them provinces. Very, very nice. And then our duty to the people. The thief territory was founded as a state dedicated to the Vori is at Zankov. Zakon. The thieves in law. However, with a recent conquest, we find ourselves ruling over millions of people that are included in our way of life. As leaders of a new proper nation, we must do something about our people. That's the least we can do, now that they give us so much money in taxes. Mr. Businessman, the wolf. Nice. Ah, finally it's getting better. Oh. Oh, there it goes. F goes. Oh. You know what? Could be worse. Could be WRRF, I suppose. It could be a lot worse, I suppose. And as much as I want to squeeze them dry, because I love squeezing, uh, we're going to aid those we protect. Under our jackboot, regular boot, under some form of footwear, we have millions that need food, water, and shelter. These people have few rights, few opportunities, and fewer ways to get the things they need. As a government, we're in a position to help these people, and it's time to act now. Probably do get better, because right now we are authoritarian Democrats, because this will give us more despotism, who is under Az Usuyan. So, next time we do this, we'll, probably, we'll definitely go down this way. So, Cool. Anything here? I would like to do an assassination, please, thank you. But eventually someday. And then, thieves for charity. Just because we're thieves in law doesn't mean we have to steal from the people. What Siberia's people deserve better than the authoritarian kleptocrats who took everything from them in the cause of ridiculous ideals? Communism, militarism, and socialism all fail them. But a position as rulers gives us the opportunity to give back. After all, where is the fun of stealing from people who can't give, uh, can't do anything back? On the clock. Uh, Usu Yan stared at the clock absentmindedly, recounting the reports he was given on Arnesini. The little dude had pocketed some profit, 15 minutes to 10. A small town Pakan, Arseni Voronov, entered uh, the bar at exactly the time as per his schedule. Usu Yan blinked at the minute clock moving one unit forward. Four minutes to 10, he ordered a plate of soup at any and some crappy beer in another unit. Tick, 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 
Tick tock. The clerk rubbed his eyes, looking up at the clock expectantly. The cook, a lovely woman behind the counter, goes to fetch the two. The arthritis does slow her down a bit, but he had accounted for her for her, or counted it for her. Three minutes, thirty. Three minutes. A bowl of lukewarm soup and some beer. The small timer takes the usual waft of it, as like he does habitually, then takes a spoon and begins eating. The delivery guy arrives through the back door with a box of beetroot. One of them looks a little damaged, but nothing suspicious. Two minutes. Usayan felt a bit giddy, his eyes not moving off the clock's face. The driver places the box behind the counter and then offers the barwoman a couple of cigarettes. I do walk out to smoke and reminisce. Tick tock. Come on, Usoyan mouth. One minute. The small timer continues eating his crappy suit, not hearing the ticking coming from one of the boxes under the counter. Ten o'clock. Usoyan blinked and rubbed his eyes with his hands. It takes about a minute to get to the nearest phone booth. Ring. Usoyan picked up the phone. Yes? The Arsene problem problems taken care of. Perfect. Usoyan placed the phone down and looked up at the clock, grimacing slightly. 10.03. A little lost schedule. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good for us. What the heck? Not bueno, my friends. Not bueno. A hey, 5.7% though, that's, that's definitely bueno. And we made another one, not bad. You go ask. Make sure when you're done, train, 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 train. Because you guys are a weird 29 combo with, so. Um, let's go through another one of you bad boys. I'm going to thank you very much. Cool. These for charity. Cool, just in case. And establish our legitimacy, whether by fear or charity. We must establish ourselves as the rightful rulers of Russia, now that there are people to rule other than ourselves. With the people on our side, we might actually be able to achieve great things. The formation of a pe people-focused Russia. A lasting global impression, and greatest of all, a united Russia. Accidents happen. That's a long struggle, I'm not gonna lie. That's not bad. Could be a lot worse. Thieves for charity. Keep building, 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 building. And then maintain a current conflict for the power. Usayans. Raises Usayans. So we gotta go to the left one here. Five billion. Wow. Maintain a current organization. In a current establishment lies the bedrock for the system Russia deserves, a society that benefits both our Vori, the Zakon, and the common man. Under this regime, the Russian people will be saved from the madness of the authoritarians, communists, Nazis, liberals, monks, murders, monarchists, and militarists. Under Jabba Ziliani, Russia will be a real good country. Pretty much. Of the criminal, by the criminal, for the criminal. Russia no longer needs authority and figureheads to forge itself. Its thieves can do a much better job than they ever could. Our system will easily prove itself to be the best alternative for Russia out of all the others. I love getting straight political power. Nice. And we'll end with a nation of our own. Regardless of how we end up running the place, we must ensure that people like us have a place at all. Whether by old ways or new, Russia will truly be a nation for us, whether the madman, strongman, pansies, and ja boot liquors of the world like it or not. But if you enjoyed today's episode, do please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll see what else we can do as good old Jabba Ziliani. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.